in the dark with no light. That's forbidden here. Is that clear? This definitely won't come cheap. You learn crime doesn't pay. Oh well, what can I do? Here you are. You've purged yourself before the law. But I'll be keeping an eye on you. You can be sure of that. Show up. I am at your service, Sir Knight. Is there any work? Mm, that depends. I'm listening. Yeah, we've got a human captive we pulled out of the river. I've an idea what to do with him, but I need a little... I have my own plans for him, but...
I'm in the service of Radze Kobolan, and that Cuman should be swinging from the Ratai gallows. Maybe, but I'm not taking it there. I don't have time. I'd rather throw him into the mill run. I can take him there for you. That's generous of you. And you'd just happen to get the reward for him too, wouldn't you? We can cut a deal, and I'll bring you your half of the reward back. Don't take it personally, but I'm just not a trusting man. Give me the money in advance and you can take him. What you do with him then is up to you. You know what? Let's do this a different way. I'll go and ride to Perchton. There, I'll tell Sir Radzig about a miller at the Bujinsky Mill who's hiding a Cuman raider, and then we'll see who ends up in the mill run. But that's not true! I'm not hiding anyone! It won't be up to you to judge what's true and what isn't. Fine! Go ahead and take that fucking Cuman. And go with him to hell for all I care. I will. It's a rat eye, but thanks. Farewell. Come to ask about that human. Ask away. How did you manage to catch it? It's not like I underestimated you, but I can only assume he was armed. I was. I went for water in the morning, and all of a sudden, I saw a man on a horse riding through the ford. Halfway down the ford, the horse got wild and threw him into the water. I waded in and pulled him up on shore. And then I realized he was a cumor. Luckily for me, he hit his head without call. So I dragged him into the barn. Interesting. So tell me. I'm here for the cube. Uh, what? The miller told me I can take him away. He's headed for the rat eye gallows. Right. Don't just stand there, then. Open up. Oh. Very well. Mit der Karte auf Marma gehen. Als ihr die Hakira hört, seht die schöne Schweiz. Get up. The executioner and Ratai can't wait to meet you. Me? Get up, then. Stop talking and get up. Please, no, no, Ratai. How about that? You do understand. And you don't want to go to Ratai? If I were you, I'd feel the same way. Please, I, I, money, underground. Money, you said? I'm listening. Igen, Igen. Me, freedom, you money. 
One moment. I'm not letting you go. Hey, freedom. You, money. I'm not letting go of you. I'm no fool. You'll escape. We're going to Ratai. You can say that again. God save. I'm here about the Kira. Ah, so it was you who brought it. I suppose you've come for your reward. Exactly. I wouldn't want to be in his shoes, I'll tell you that. That is the first human anyone's ever brought in alive. Then again, those devils don't deserve any mercy. Anyway, here's the reward for your service. Thanks. What's the matter, laddie? Need to shit? Look out. What in God's name? I see to buy some or catch or some more meal. Are you quite well? Ugh.
I've got some goods. All right. I've got some goods. All right. Good luck then. Fazla bak yapmıyor mu? I've got some goods here. All right. Here you're able to open. Certainly. I'd like to practice. All right. Now. Take care. I've got some goods. All right. Here you're able to open. Certainly. I'm interested in more of... Wouldn't you rather learn the basic? Well... You've an honest trade. How come you got mixed up in crime? Evil times. The harvest failed. And there was no grain to mill. And a child to feed on top of it all. I had no choice. And meanwhile, the lords in the castle and the monks in the monastery stuffed their crores to burst him. Where's the justice in that? So you took justice into your own hands, is that it? And now you take whatever you need? Pull your head out of your ass, Henry. And take a good look around you. Wars come and go, but nothing really changes. It's the poor that do the dying, and the nobles who reap the rewards. I'll see you later.
Fucking see you, Henry. How do you like it at the mill, Fritz? Got to be better than the mines. It's worse here than at Scalax. There you could disappear without anyone noticing. But here. Eh. But why would you want to disappear? Nimoy isn't here. <laughs> no, he's not. But the local foreman is an even bigger ass. <laughs> not sure that's possible. You better believe it. I'd like to pay him back for everything and drown him in the river. Drown him? What's he done to you? It was the uh, first or the second day. Uh, we had a disagreement and I told him off. And then, all of a sudden, we're fighting and that fucker just throws me in the river. I nearly drowned. But how did you get out? I thought you couldn't swim. I can't. They pulled me out. I was up to my waist in water. I see. Well, I'd be pretty fucking angry too. So you want to pay him back? Exactly. I don't give a shit about anything around here, but that bastard's in need of a good trouncing. What about the others at the mill? Are they awful as well? The miller's an old fool. He believes every word that comes out of Thomas's mouth. It's hopeless. And then there's the miller's daughter. She's a pretty lass, and kind with it. But what can she do? Nothing. Not that it's Dr. Matthew you're going to see her. But Thomas is the root of the problem. Do you think he's jealous? Is she a sweetheart? He might make puppy dog eyes at her. But most of the time he just struts about like a peacock. I really don't think she's the problem. And what do you want to do about it? Do you think you can come to an agreement? No fucking chance. Matthew hopes so because he likes it here. It's true the work's better than the mines, but the pay's worse. So how do you plan on dealing with it? Leaving? Perhaps. But first, I want to give Thomas a proper trouncing. I mean a real thrashing. And you think that will help? Maybe. Maybe it'll knock some sense into that fat head of his. Or he'll be too frightened to mess with me. That might help. So why don't you arrange a fight with him? If we win, you leave us alone. Oh, we could... What? We could lure him off someplace far away and then wait for him. Maybe to play dice with Lawrence. He would have to go through the dark woods. Mm. I'll think about it. I still want to ask you more about Thomas. I spoke with him briefly, and he doesn't seem so horrible. Then you ought to try working with him. He's a sneaky bastard. And arrogant. You should see how he puffs it. Who's Lawrence? Another mill hand? Aye, but at the neighbouring mill. They call him the Wren. Damned if I know why. Thomas goes there to play dice with him. Maybe I can put my feet up for a while. Good boy. Greetings, Henry. I'd like you to teach me how... Certainly. Well. I've heard you don't have it easy here. So you spoke to Fritz, then? I bet that wasn't quite how he put it. <laughs> no, not quite. Apart from Thomas's name, the rest was mostly swear words. I can imagine. I've been hearing the same from him all week. The foreman here is a pain in the arse. He's trying either to wear us to the bone or force us to leave. Hmm. I'd never have guessed he's like that. Well, get a job here as a hand and you'll soon see. And what does he do during the day? Does he work with you? <laughs> Good one. 
He keeps his eye on everything, but his hand only touches the saw when the miller shows up, which isn't that surprising. Why? The last time he did anything, he almost took his thumb off with a chisel. I wouldn't put an axe in those paws of his either. So he's clumsy and arrogant. That's what you said about your last master, that Nimoy. Aye, but at least you could sneak away from old Nimoy for a bit. No chance of that around here. And what do you want to do about it? Just run away? Actually, I'd like to stay here. At least for a bit. I never would have thought I'd like working in a mill. But not with him around. It's unbearable. And there's no one I can complain to. But you could. Me? Do you think they'll listen to me? They did once already, didn't they? They hired us because of you. You could have another word with them. Back then, making promises was enough. Now, it will be worse. You can forget about the miller. It's Thomas you need to convince. The miller takes his opinion seriously. So, will you do it for us? Again? Fine. I'll try and talk to him. <sighs> I'm glad. But try not to get on his wrong side. You won't get anywhere with him then. I'll keep that in mind. I'd like to ask about... Always forcing... If only. That wouldn't be so awful. But nothing we do is good enough for him. There's always some reason. I can imagine. You know what it's like. We do too little, and it takes us too long, and what we eat's worth more than the work we've done, and it's no fun listening to that sort of shit day up. And the miller won't stick up for you. I would have thought all the yelling would drive him mad. Not really. He trusts that loudmouthed bastard more than us. He's got us down for a pair of parasites. I see. What's so stupid is the mill really needs us. They haven't had any hands here for quite a while, and the mill needs a lot of fixing. But with them around, we can't even get to work. And you definitely don't... I've already told you once, he's an arsehole. I'd say there's nothing we can do about it. If he wants to yell at us... Have you tried talking to him? What do you think? But that just sets him off. He starts... See you later. I'm at your service. Are you happy with your new workers? They're good carpenters, but someone constantly has to stand behind their backs and keep an eye on them. Really? Yes, yes. When I'm there with them, everything goes smoothly. But the moment I leave, I hear Thomas yelling at them. I've heard. I don't know what I'd do without Thomas. He keeps an eye on everything for me now. The mill wouldn't function without him. Yeah, but Thomas has problems with carpentry. You're right. You should hear him cursing when he has to turn his hand to it. He knows he'll never be a real miller. What, just because of that? No. He's not too skilled at handling the water wheel and the mill run either. He can wield a shovel well enough, but otherwise I have to keep telling him how to do things. So he's not been foreman too long then? No. My son used to run the mill, but then his wagon overturned with him inside it. It'll be a year ago now, come spring. I'm sorry. Me too, boy. And after Martin was gone, the other workers left and only Thomas stayed. I don't know what I'd do without him. What happened that day? Wagons don't overturn themselves. He was transporting new stone blocks for the mill and he had to take a detour. Since the wagon was too heavy for the Ford, it was after a downpour. The load must have slipped and the whole wagon fell on him. I pray it was quick. So he was alone, with no one to help him? Of course not. Thomas was there too. He helped mm. Martin to load the wagon in Sasso and both of them set off back. Just the two of them? No one else was there? No, they always did it that way. Martin didn't like dragging people where it wasn't necessary, when they could be doing work elsewhere. But if I had been there with them, maybe he'd still be alive. Thomas couldn't pull the wagon off him. He ran for help, but it was already too late. 
I'm sorry. But I'm sure he's in God's kingdom now. He was a good boy. A kind soul. Have you been without carpenters for a while? A long time. Since winter, it's been just me and Thomas. Nobody stays around? No. These days, it's hard to find a man you can rely on. Young lads today are bone idle. None of them wants to do an honest day's work. And how many have actually worked here? About half a dozen, maybe more. We always put up with them till the most urgent work was done, then sent them packing. And what about Jane? Shouldn't she have a husband by now? What are you trying to say? A pretty girl like her is ripe for marriage. With a large dowry because she comes from a mill? Well, she had herself a man once, but he ran away during the winter. He wasn't up to the work either. And how long did he last? You know, he was here for a while. But back then my son was a foreman and he was a kindly son. So everyone started leaving when Thomas took over? Well, Thomas is a dog on slackers. And just as well. Maybe it's harsh, but that's what you need nowadays. If we don't mill, folk don't eat. So the moment Thomas became mill foreman, Everyone started running off. Not one man could stand it here, even if they had a chance to marry Jane. Don't you think Thomas might be doing it on purpose? Sounds to me like he's after the mill, or your daughter, or both. That's not like him. He's a good man and straightforward. He knows I can always send for a new mill form. And Jane? Don't worry about her. She'll wed whoever I approve of, even Thomas, if he asks for her hand. At least with him, I know he won't leave the mill. Indeed, why would he, once he's got rid of everyone else? That's enough. I don't know why you're trying to slander, Thomas, but I don't mean to listen to it any longer. Take care. I heard what you asked my father. You can't expect help from him. He's none too sharp these days. And can you help me? No. Nobody listens to me. But I wanted to say that Thomas does do it on purpose. He did it the same way before. Why? Because he's afraid if someone comes who's more skilled, father will notice and give his job to the newcomer. And your father lets him? Can't he settle this? He probably could, but he doesn't want to. My brother was the mill foreman before him, but last year a wagon overturned on him, broke his back. It broke my father too. And Thomas was here the longest. He was always close to my brother, so father chose him as the mill foreman. And Thomas doesn't listen to anyone. Can't you persuade him? No. He keeps looking my way and tries to be nice, but he doesn't care what I've got to say. When I tell him something, it goes in one ear and out the other. And this probably won't end well. But what happened to your brother? And what does that have to do with this? I don't know. You mentioned it, so I was just wondering. There's not much to tell. A stone block that was loaded wrong, slippery ground after rain, and when the wagon overturned on him, there was no one around to help. What do you mean, no one? Surely he wasn't alone. No. He had Thomas with him. But Thomas couldn't lift the wagon off him, and by the time he found help, it was too late. And as if that wasn't bad enough, Someone robbed my brother while Thomas was looking for help. Someone robbed him after he was dead? I don't know. But they took a mottled scarf which I gave him as a keepsake. He laughed when I gave it to him. He said it would make him look like a fop. But he still wore it all the time. And someone must have thought it was worth stealing. But who'd steal a scarf? Why are you asking me? When they brought him back here, he didn't have it. That's all I know. I'm sorry about what happened to him. Me too. But it was his own fault. If he'd brought more people with him, he'd still be alive. He was too... I understand. Look out!
be with you. So what do you think about the workers I brought you? If I hadn't put in a good word for them, the miller would have thrown them out by now. I heard them say something else. So they're complaining, are they? <laughs> I provide for them, and all they do is slack off. Isn't it the miller who provides for them? He can't manage the work anymore. If it weren't for me, there'd be nothing left standing around here. But you need the help anyway, and they're pretty handy. Maybe, but they're in no danger of overworking themselves. They act like they're too good for the mill. And I saw them eyeing up Jane. Nothing strange about that. She's a pretty girl, and she's of an age to marry. It's not marriage they've got on their minds. They have their way with her, then before her belly starts to grow, they'd have run for the hills. Look, we can reach an agreement. You need the mill fixed, they need the money. If they have peace to do their work, they'll be able to finish it faster. But... And then they'll take their groschen and leave. The mines will open again, and the faster they get their money, the quicker they'll be gone. But do you really think I can trust them to do it? Will they do their work and leave? And leave Jane alone in the meantime? Of course. They're not interested in the mill. They just need the coin to pay their debts. Once they've got enough, they'll have no reason to stay here. I never thought we could sort it out this way. I've known them for a long time, and you can rely on them when it comes to us. Everybody will be better off. All right. If they keep their part of the bargain, I'll even give them a few extra groschen. But woe be tied them if they don't. You can tell them that. May the Lord watch over you. Yeah. Greetings, Henry. It took some doing, but I made a deal with him. I'm glad to hear it. So we can stay here? He'll leave us be? He'll leave you alone, but there are conditions. Once you finish your job, you'll vanish from here. But you'll get an extra groschen or two for your troubles. And that's it? I thought... Oh, never mind. Oh, and you're to stop dallying with the miller's daughter. Keep on mucking about with her and you'll muck things up for yourselves. The fucking bastard. He can go fuck himself. He'd better give us enough groschen to make it worth it. But I suppose I should thank you. You may have bought us some peace and quiet, and that's better than nothing. Here's something for your help. See you later.
Ezt nem csináltad jól.
God be with you. I've come in the name of Sahar. No, I don't know anything about. That's all. I've come. No, I don't know. That man Lubos. I didn't really know him. That's all. Take care now. Could do with a bite to eat. Can I sleep? All right. For how long? Just the one. All right. Here you are. You all like it here. Where do I go to sleep? You'll have no trouble finding it. Right inside the door to the building, there's a ladder up to... Take care now. <laughs> 